So if you guys have been following the channel, you know that Divo is one of my favorite dividend ETFs. It has close to 5% dividend yield because it holds both great blue chip dividend paying companies, as well as a tactical covered call approach to give you additional income. But the opportunistic covered call nature of Divo is what still allows it to have good price appreciation, unlike say QILD. Although if we just look at the price appreciation of Divo versus the market, we can see that it does fall behind and this is usually the case with most dividend assets. They're just not super growthy tech funds and when you don't take into consideration the payout in the total return, it does fall behind as we see in this price appreciation graph. But there's actually an investment product that you guys recommended to me called BST in this light blue line. And it has better price appreciation than the QQQ as we can see here. In fact, if I put in ARK-K, it has very similar price movements to the ARK Innovation ETF, all while having a 5% dividend yield and really fast dividend growth of over 15% per year. To me, that really seems like the ultimate investment vehicle because in my portfolio, I essentially combine these two assets. So I have funds like Devo and SEHD for the dividend, and then I also have assets like ARC for high growth. So BST seems to be all of this into one fund. So let's try and learn a little bit about this investment. So right from the website, it says BlackRock Science and Technology Trust, BST, is a perpetual closed-end equity fund BST commenced operation in October 2014 with the investment objectives of providing income and total return through a combination of current income, current gains, and long-term capital appreciation. As part of the investment strategy, the trust intends to employ a strategy of writing covered call options on a portion of the common stocks in its portfolio. And this is exactly what Divo does. Divo has a tactical covered call writing process, which they implement to try and generate a higher yield. The thing is they do it over a portfolio of dividend stocks. And BST of course is focusing on growthy technology stocks. So 51% of this fund is in technology. And these are the top 10 holdings. We have some big names like Apple, Microsoft, and Amazon, as well as other names like PayPal and MasterCard. Now, the first thing you need to know about this investment is that it's a closed end fund. Most things you invest in like Divo and VOO are opened end funds. And the main difference is that closed end funds have an IPO where they offer all of their initial shares and raise their capital. And those shares simply trade on the open exchange. And because of that, they can trade at a premium or a discount to their NAV, their net asset value, while open end funds issue new shares every time new capital comes into the investment. And because of that, they essentially are always priced at their NAV. But to learn more, let's read a little bit from this article and I'll leave it linked down below. Now this bit here is talking about the distributions and how the fund generates that 5% dividend yield because it's not from dividends. In fact, as we can see here, a lot of the distributions are from long-term gains and return of capital. And a lot of people have negative connotations when it comes to return of capital payments. And I'm going to make a dedicated video on this topic, but this section in the article here talks about how with this fund, the distributions are more than covered. So it says, looking at NAV performance, the gain is quite impressive. These numbers do indicate that BST had its distributions fully covered. The 38.53 average NAV was above the value where it started, and both the NAV at the end of the year, 51.94, and the peak NAV for the year, 52.74, all point to no NAV erosion. Yet another indicator that BST is not overpaying its distribution is that the fund increased the distribution in 2020. The fund also increased the distribution again at the start of this year to the current 22 cents a month payment. Looking at the sources of the distribution, I see that none of it came from income, so true dividends or interest payments. And that's not surprising given that this is a tech focused fund. The distribution is split between long-term capital gains and return of capital. Since the return of capital was clearly not destructive last year, I am not particularly concerned with how much of the distribution was return of capital, provided this doesn't turn out to be typical. Okay, so to clarify a bit more on the return of capital, because that is where a lot of this dividend comes from, here's another article, and we're going to be reading this section about whether or not a return of capital is a bad thing. 
the prevalent ways to assess whether a return of capital is destructive are to consider what has been happening to the closed-end fund's net asset value and its record of maintaining its dividend. If a fund's NAV has been generally staying flat or going up, then its return of capital distributions have not been destructive. The fund is not slowly liquidating itself to make excessive short-term distributions. If a fund's NAV increases over time, the fund has been earning its distributions. So that's a pretty quick way to see if return of capital is being used in a poor way. So as long as the growth in the NAV is greater than the yield of the asset, assuming it's all return of capital, then that's okay, it's sustainable. And BST has seen a ton of NAV growth over time because it has been performing very nicely. And that's why they've been able to raise their dividends quite aggressively over time. So if we take a look at their physical dividend payment amount in this column right here, in 2018, it was around 13 cents per share. They bumped it to 15 cents per share. In the end of 2019, they boosted to 16 and half cents per share. And now in 2021, it's over 22 cents per share. So that's aggressive growth. And we can see just how stable that growth in their dividend has been. And that's because the NAV has been performing extremely well. So they can take their distributions, which consist of short and long-term capital gains, as well as return of capital, and steadily increase it over time, as long as that is below the pace of NAV growth. So I have to say, when it comes to my portfolio, I like growth and dividends. That's why I split them up in my portfolio. So when it comes to this investment, it's very intriguing to me. I got to do more research because it is a closed end fund. I don't invest in those right now. And the dividend isn't a true dividend payment. It's return of capital. It's short term and long term capital gains being paid out to you in the form of distributions, which is okay. There's nothing inherently wrong with that as long as the fund can support it through growth in the NAV, which BST definitely does have. And as we saw in the price change graph, the price of BST has been very nice. It's been outperforming QQQ and it's more in line with the ARK Innovation ETF while having a very similar dividend payment as Divo. But the mechanics are a bit different being that it is a closed end fund. So I think right now I'm going to keep my portfolio the way I have it with my dedicated growth ETFs over here and then my dedicated dividend funds over here like Divo. This gives me the control to exactly allocate how much capital I want in each type of asset. Plus, I'm a long-term investor, and when it comes to my dividend assets, I want something that I'm going to be able to hold over a lifetime. And I feel like investing in blue-chip dividend growth companies is going to give me that in a much more secure way than a closed-end fund strategy like BST. So I view Divo and SCHD as a bit more resilient long-term in that way, which is definitely a positive, but only time will tell if that is a true assumption or not. But let us know in the comments down below what you think of BST, this growth, high dividend, closed end fund. I'm definitely interested to know what you guys think in the comments down below. If you're still watching and enjoyed, give the video a like, subscribe to the channel, all that YouTube stuff. And I'll see you in the next one. one.